Hello everyone, this is Liz here for you coming today with another vision from the Lord. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Jesus, for breakthrough. Thank you for clearance. Thank you for understanding. Show me the way, Lord God. Help me to portray the the intensity and the understanding and the wisdom that you have shared with me. Lord God, give us understanding. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. So this was a doozy tonight. So the Lord gave me a vision. Um, I thought I automatically understood what it was. Um, and I did only in part, though. He showed me that it was halfway an understanding of what um, he had given me. So he had me go back, verify, read some stuff. And you guys, I had to really bind up the enemy and 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 really focus in on what he was trying to tell me about this so I I had a vision I was in bed and I saw a tiger and usually when I see the tiger it represents the antichrist so that's why I automatically jumped to the antichrist but um the Lord told me that this has two meanings so it was that um the the tiger was facing away from me and he looked like he was looking around a corner. So I could see his back. He was walking through a field of flowers. And he looked like he was trying to peek around a corner. So um, what the Lord showed me originally, what I understood it to be is that it's um, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. So that was the first part of the meaning of the vision. And then the second part that the Lord gave me was that This is also has meaning um, towards the 1000 year reign and also the times just of peace that are ahead beyond that in eternity. Um, He was saying that uh, the verse he gave me was uh, 1 Peter, I think it's 1 and 25. I can't be 100% sure, but the verse was verse 25. Um, The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat the, the ox. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. So he was trying to show me that there was a time of peace coming that it won't always be like this, right? That we will have peace again and that all the whole time will not just be of the enemy coming after people, right? And and of, you know, of a time of fear, you know, a time of anguish. It won't always be like this, just like this Antichrist and all these things are right around the corner. All, there's also peace right here around the corner. The enemy's time is short. It is very limited. And God will get the glory. He will get the victory throughout all of this. So yes, that was the meaning. Let's go ahead and pray and close out. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for the victory that we have in you, Christ Jesus. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are our friend. You are the end all be all. And there's no hope like hope in you, God. You give us everything that we need, God, in the times that we live in. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, thank you, thank you for light even in the darkness. We love you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
If there's anyone who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, just pray this prayer. But more than saying the words, believe them in your heart and you will be saved. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all my sins. Lord, I know they are many. I'm asking you to sit on the throne of my heart and lead me and guide me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and you rose again on the third day. Thank you that I am saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, if you pray that prayer and you believe this sincerely with your heart and confess it with your mouth, then you are saved. And no one can change that. When when you believe that and you confess it, the Holy Spirit comes in and seals you until the day of redemption. And that is when Jesus returns for his bride. He is going to come back and he'll break the seal that the Holy Spirit has placed upon you. But right now the Holy Spirit is in you. He's leading and guiding you into all truth and he is going to show you the way he'll give you knowledge and understanding that you would not have had on your own he's going to lead you and guide you into all truth is what the bible says so that includes job home um everywhere in your life where you have a decision that needs to be made the holy spirit will help you with it don't chase in the spirit spend time with the lord open your word and and open your Bible and know that God is speaking. The more time you spend with him, the more you recognize his voice. So just sit with the Lord, talk to him, and he's going to give you an understanding of what you need to do. Go out and be baptized in Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as well as go and join a church home because Jesus wanted you to do that. He said, forsake not the fellowshipping of yourselves one to another. He wants you to come together with other believers and stay sharpened in him. So the Holy Spirit will show you where to do that, who to do that with, and where to go. Go out, make disciples of all men, and work for the Lord. He is coming soon. All right, you guys, be blessed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.